woke up alive again. <laughs> if you guys are here, so did you. We woke up alive again today. It's a gift for many, a sentence for some. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with your day? You woke up alive again. What are you going to do with your day? One day, you're not going to have one to do with, possibly here. Bit of an odd opening, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, back again. Got a lot here. I believe the Owl Man chimed in. I don't know how long ago, but I just got an email this morning. So I've added him to the top of the list to be heard. This morning, lots of knowledge. Lots of knowledge. A lot of good, a lot of very kind people email me. A lot. You know, sometimes it's the... It's easy to bring up the negative. I think it's human nature to focus on negative or talk about negative, right? On average. So, make a point of making sure you guys understand that I get a shit pile of encouraging email. Kind words, positive words, and I thank every single one of you people for that. Keeps me going. What else, Sarah? And uh, believe me, the How to Hunt store is hers. I got nothing to do with it. And she, I got a little bit of shit yesterday because I forgot to mention, she put a sale, spring sale, on her store. 20% off, and the code is SPRING20, the number 20 at the end. All caps lock. She set up her case, that's caps lock, right? Spring 20. And for anybody who is a little confused, $20, I believe, even more of the price of the items is directly for shipping. So there you go. The shipping's included and it's not cheap. God, I remember when I came out with that first book and I was shipping books. It was cheaper for me, for me to ship a book from British Columbia to Southern Texas than it was from Whistler, British Columbia to Vancouver Island, which you could almost shoot a bullet to, right? Canadian shipping, I'm not sure about the American, but the Canadian post is, is tragic. It's absolutely tragic here in Canada, Stan. It's embarrassing. It is tragic. It's basically the cost of, I think it was the same cost as the book, or even a little more cost of the book, was, to, was shipping. Which was which, which would be a two-hour drive down the highway, an hour and forty-minute ferry ride, and then minutes delivery to whatever post office was uh, more expensive than shipping from the same location to Southern Texas. Crazy, right? But anyways, there you go. Passed on. She has a sale on Spring Twenty. Is the code on the How to Hunt store? Okay. She's got some pretty cool stuff. Um, she's working on. Now back to, um, back to the people. We gotta get some voices heard, all right? Gotta get some voices heard. All right, where are we? Well, let's start start off with the album. It's the last one I saved this morning while having my first coffee. Mark, this is red. Haven't heard from the album in a while. Might need a slurp, extra slurp of caffeine for this one. All the animals are fed. It's raining. It's cold. It dropped from. It was at 25 the other day, and all of a sudden just dropped right down to 10 yesterday. Here. This is titled Validation, Answers, and a Pattern from the Owl Man. Steve, once again, I feel compelled to write to you. This time it will not be too long, but I think it is important. You often mention that we are seeking commonalities so we can put together patterns. That is what I want to do here. Contrary to what some listeners think, I am not an expert on the Sabe. I just was in the proper place at the proper time. It took years of personal time for all my experiences to come to fruition. I listen to you for personal validation of what the Sabe have spoken of. Like I have said, I don't necessarily believe what they say, so I patiently listen for people's encounters who may have witnessed something that may validate what the Sabe have spoken of. First off, I want to address an individual from Alaska. He wanted to vet me by asking if I knew how the Sabe governed themselves and what a particular individual's name was. 
I must say, I do and don't. Let me explain. The Sabes say they are overwatched by a governing body consisting of 13 individuals. A council of 12, so to speak, with the number 13 as the deciding voter. This council is made up of 12 regional chieftains, and the 13th individual, we would, for lack of a better term, function like a president. Number 13 is the guy who has veto power, so to speak. I'm using human terms to put into our perspective. Okay, stress on that one, because I was getting a little bit what? As soon as you say, I am using human terms to put it into our perspective. Okay, guys? So that means it didn't necessarily come to him in those direct words. Best way he can shoot it to us. I have no idea where these regions are or how their borders are divided. I do not know if this is worldwide or just North America. I forgot the name of the region chieftain who governs over my area, but I was able to assess that he lives somewhere in Upper Wisconsin near Lake Michigan. You may wonder what these regional chieftains do. They function like a governor and a judge. If you recall, I once mentioned there are clan rules and societal rules. Clan rules vary, but society rules have to be strictly obeyed. If one of these societal rules is broken, the guilty party has to appear before his regional chieftain for judgment. The only society rule I am familiar with is the strict prohibition of murder, both with them and us. I know that killing one of us warrants the death penalty, with no exceptions. In regards to each other, you may end up executed or thrown into what I call a penal colony for life. I may explain that to a later date, but I'm very hesitant to do so because people hear what they want to hear, then act stupid. This council makes the rules that all the Sabe are supposed to adhere to regardless of the clan. Rules are made by debate and argument and are agreed upon with unanimous consensus with number 13 giving the deciding vote. Number 13 can either make the rule law or abolish a law. He is the tiebreaker. And final word on what is to be implemented. Rule breakers are hunted down by, like, by what I call a goon squad if they do not comply with the agreed upon rules. They have a name for this goon squad, but honestly I forget it. As far as who is this number 13, Back in 2013, I knew of his name, and he was unpopular with the Council of Twelve because he wanted the Sabe to have a more open relationship with our people. This made him many enemies, and he was always moving around to keep himself safe. Yes, I know that is contradictory. I'm just repeating what the Sabe have said. I knew he was somewhere in Oklahoma then. All I know was somewhere in 2013-14, he was deposed and replaced by another individual whose name I have never been told, frankly because I have never really asked, but I plan to when I get the chance. Someone recently asked if they can heal you. Yes. Like I've mentioned, I have no idea how or what extent and what the limitations are. I myself was healed by one individual who, without my consent, totally removed plantar fisciitis from my right foot. I suffered for three years and spent thousands dealing with it, never getting any relief. Then, one evening, while having a conversation with him, my entire body vibrated. It's hard to explain. Imagine your entire body shaking inside and out, and nothing you can do to stop it. In the morning, when I got out of bed, I braced myself for the excruciating pain like I have done for years, only to be shocked it was gone. I mean, totally gone. It never came back. I eventually asked him later why he did that. He explained it was a gesture of goodwill, and he wanted me to trust him. This is the individual who told me I would find a way to tell my people that they are not monsters. Regardless, if people think I'm making this up, it's irrelevant. Truth is, it has huge implications. If they could do something like this, and the Sabe became public knowledge, sick people would flood the wild places like Catholics flocking to a highway underpass to see a hard water stain of the Virgin Mary. I've been very hesitant about sharing this because of the implications. People cannot just flood into their homes thinking they're going to be healed of whatever ails them. I don't think you can demand that that of any of them. I can only attest to what happened to me, and as I mentioned, I never asked for it. What is interesting to me is, I never mentioned the pain I was suffering with to this Sabe. Somehow he saw it, or felt it, and as an act of his own free will decided to do something about it, and in the process took a huge risk in revealing a hidden power that some of them may have. I am positive they can't heal everything, 
but I'm pretty sure it can help with chronic pain due to inflammation and the nervous system, but not illness that is pathogenic in origin. Are they willing to help people they are connected with deeply? Possibly. I really don't know. I can tell you this. They do not trust us easily. And trying to gain their trust takes a lot of time and commitment. And to be honest, I can tell the vast majority of humans don't have the strength or courage to do that. Remember, I have said they will put you through hell to test your mettle. We just do not seem to have the ability to control and work through our fear when we know they are there. <clears throat> a lot of those intimidation tactics are just that. They want to see how you deal with being in their presence. I'm not special because of all this. Everything I experienced was a bloody accident. I had no idea what the long-term consequences would be. Not that all this has messed me up. To me, the Sabe are just part of our world. People go about their lives either aware or unaware. And how could you deal with that? How you deal with that is dependent on you. You can either move forward with a new view of the world, or you can try to hold on to the past when ignorance is bliss. Back to my original intention of this email. <clears throat> Excuse me. On April 26th, 27th, someone sent in a recording of wood knocking. I'm enclosing one of the few personal recordings I have, I have of them long before any type of mind speaking events. I think this was made in July 2008. I used a tape. I used to tape a small digital recorder to a walking staff and stick it in the ground next to my seat when we would sit in the forest at night. My friend and I agreed if we ever felt creeped out, we would leave. We left after this short recording. It was a hot, humid July night at around 11 p.m., and there was a thunderstorm moving in from the northwest. There was no rain, but every time the lightning flashed, it lit up the dark surrounding forest. We would sit with no light, and damn, when that lightning went off, it was too much to deal with. We got creeped out. I want you and everyone to hear this, because every so-called wood knock I have heard never varies from this. The one you recently played sounds no different, which leads me to believe what we call wood knocks is just an imitation of what we think it is. The sound never seems to vary, and if you ever try to hit some random tree with a random branch, the sound is never consistent. Yes, I never really asked them about how they make this sound. I do recall mentioning a wood knock once, and they replied, what is that? erroneously thinking they would know what we would consider obvious. So, play this recording on a loop for everyone if you so choose and see if this sounds like the majority of the ones people have managed to record. Do we have a common pattern here? One last thing. I am writing this on May 1st. You just read a very detailed account of someone who saw one breaking off small twigs and carrying them in his hands. He was all putting them in his mouth and pulling them through. He was cleaning his teeth. I once asked them how they keep the teeth clean. He's, they said, they'll take twigs of tree bark and pull them through their teeth. I remember thinking how odd that is. And as God is my witness, I'm not making this up. One simple encounter from one of your viewers just confirmed something one Sabes mentioned years ago. I can't th thank that viewer enough for sharing that email. I, at least now, at least now I know one thing they have shared with me is actually true, and it is validated by someone who wished to be anonymous. On a personal note, Steve, you've come a long way in your personal walk with the Sabe. I think they have a lot of respect for you because you push past your fear and because you address them as one person to another when you go bush. They will honor your wishes. Keep doing what you're doing, but do not be surprised if one actually decides to show himself to you in a non-threatening way in the daylight. Just hold your ground, look at his chest, not his face. The face will stay in your mind forever, but the body won't haunt you. Don't say hello. It's okay to be scared, but be composed. Just say, I'm not here to be your friend, I just want to share the land in peace. From my own personal experience, this will work well to live peacefully side by side. I know you have a lot of voices telling you what to do. I just want you to consider my words and keep them in the back of your mind. I want you to have peace of mind and not have your lifestyle ended. If this happens, just keep moving to whatever destination you have in your mind. I know that is hard, but it will show you are in control of your fear. On the plus side, they may keep the predators away from you while you are out and about. It just depends on how much they want to invest in you. 
Once again, thank you for taking the time to share this. You're always gracious and honorable. The world needs more men like you. Blessings to all who have ears to hear the owl men. And there you go. Another one, which we, which we commonly say, take from it what you will to leave it. And here is the sound which I hit. It's weird. I don't know why my phone does it. Both the phones I've had, a few of them. When somebody sends me an attachment, I open, it, I open the email with the phone, not the computer. And it has an attachment to for a view for video or audio. I hit view, and then it shows the play icon with a broken thing on top. Every time. Then I hit download, it saves it to the notes folder on my phone, and then I can play it. The hell's up with that? I didn't even know about notes until a year ago that I found all the shit that was downloaded on there. So listen to this. It's exactly what I heard coming from there. No, I was working like this, coming from that hill, and then straight 90 up there. That's exactly what I heard that one time. I've heard Knox a few times myself. Uh, another time I was at the base of Mount Curry, where there is nothing but bright lights and Sasquatch sightings all around that damn mountain. And I was swinging a mall, splitting mall. If all you guys, a lot of you don't know what a splitting mall is, it's like a sledgehammer weight size, but with an axe blade on one side of the sledgehammer itself. So you can imagine the pow it makes when you swing that thing into a round of fir um, firewood. It's a real loud whack pop. And uh, I had a girlfriend with me, broad daylight, summertime, sun's shining, no wind, and then boom. <laughs> way up there in the timber that sound came back I think two or three times it's the only other time I clearly heard it um, let's play it again I'll crank up the volume Good There you go. Okay, man, appreciate it. Thanks for sending the email again. You're always welcome to keep sending them in to us. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of people that think you're absolutely batshit crazy, right? But uh, one thing's for sure is you're consistent and you don't give a shit if anybody hears or believes or not. And somebody has to have some kind of answers, right, you guys? And the, the truth is going to be stranger than fiction. Is it not? But anyway, uh, for you, Owl Man, um, I've been in contact with a handful of people recently, this past while, who were very knowledgeable when it comes to this topic. And um, I asked just a simple question, yes or no, because everybody's flat out, flat out busy. And um, I said, just when you get a quick chance, Throw me down a quick yes or no answer. And I said, are there human beings actively pursuing and killing these beings? And the answer was absolutely. So there you go. Another, I will be able to follow up that conversation with that and those individuals at a later time. But uh, to you, Al Man, do you know of this? Do you know this? This is one thing for me that has been uh, on my brain for quite some time, just for me personally, is um, <clears throat> if there is human beings with enough knowledge to actively pursue, locate, and dispatch these wild, what we would consider wild, we should probably just consider them free beings on the face of the planet, which we all know by now, the so-called governments do not like and do not want any being to be free. <laughs> That's a fact, right? That is an absolute fact. So um, anyway, that would be one huge puzzle piece for my ride is to find out uh, who. And I believe if we could actually find out who, we would find a shit pile of answers, right? 
who is it? You know, we had a report from, I think it was Janice Carter, it's a Carter Green, I forget the name of this woman, sorry you guys. Uh, once again, I don't, I don't uh, rehearse what I have to say, I just turn it on and we go at it. So, um, there was a substantial, very solid account of that loser, who's the head of that organization who takes people's and couches and puts them on the website, harassed this woman's property and was seen in the helicopter and they had rifles. Hmm. Weird, isn't it? What's up with that? And that wasn't the only time that absolute loser was uh, noted as coming to trespassing on being near properties where common occurrences are going on and packing heat. So, how does a shitbag like that low IQ idiot manage to get firearms and a helicopter rallied up? Makes you kind of wonder, right? Not that it's about that idiot, but um, more getting back to my, my question at hand is, who is it? Who is it? How are they doing it? Why are they doing it? The why isn't too hard to figure out because I think uh, the, the truth, like I said before, the biggest mystery is us. <laughs> Without a doubt, the biggest mystery is us. And the sooner we can find out the truth about us, I believe, um, then we will have the answer to everything, right? And uh, something's tied in there between these unknown free people and us. Something's definitely, there's a big link there going on. And uh, the, the, the effort to keep this knowledge and keep us guessing no matter what it takes is absolutely substantial. I know not too many people look at, look at it from that angle, but if all of you could just take a few minutes out of your time to just try to picture only this, picture only this for a minute so you can see how massive and, and, and much of an impact it is. It is the, the, the effort put forth to keep the general population guessing and not knowing the truth of this one truth is unbelievable. Why is that? And then try to figure out why, right? <laughs> then you could probably um, relate to me a little better because that's where my brain has been for quite some time. Why? <laughs> why are you lying? Why is this so important that the general public cannot have this knowledge as fact? Why is that, right? Another thing too, the, the, for, and sadly for human beings, for us, I learned, I've learned, sorry, for quite some time now. One time I had, I was guiding a man, and the majority of you know who this man is. I'm not going to tell you who it is, just because privacy, right? And uh, I remember him always telling me, or he sold me a handful of times while having, because you got to understand, you guys, I'm spending one on one with these people who I guided in the mountains in the middle of nowhere for up to 14 days, sometimes 21 days. And uh, as soon as they realize that I'm treating them, I see them as an equal human being and nothing more, then they realize I'm safe and we talk and we're friends and they spill all. And uh, but anyways, uh, one thing he said was, uh, he says, one thing my daddy told me, deny, 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 when it comes to anything. And he was joking about being caught with someone else while you're married was the topic he was talking about. But what he said was, so it's the biggest, the biggest, I'll never forget he said this, but he said his, his father told him the biggest lesson was no matter what, deny, 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 and it works. <laughs> right, but it's funny how you go along through life, though, all of the multiple people you meet during your ride and, and how one sentence stays with you from somebody you met for only 14 days out of 50 years. And then another person over here and another person there six years later and you and you remember certain sentences along the way and they stay with you. And I don't know why, but hearing somebody of such intelligence and success saying that to me made me go, ah, aha. Uh -huh. Right? It told me it helped to fit a little bit of a confusing puzzle when it comes to the human herd. Deny, deny, deny. The human herd doesn't have much of a... Uh, doesn't have much action against that. The human herd, herd is absolutely affected by that. Deny, deny, deny. Uh, well, we had 30 people saw this thing running down the highway in broad daylight. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Probably not. Deny, deny, deny. <laughs> Done. 
Right? Is that amazing how something so simple is so effective on all of you, all of us? Deny, deny, deny. Done deal. Just like that. Just like that. Done deal. Amazing. Creepy. Anyway, a babbling. Anyways, Mr. Owl Man, again, thanks for emailing in. And if you can come up with any kind of a anything when it comes to human beings assassinating these free beings, I will really run I really want to learn about it. And um, <clears throat> believe me, if I had the time right now, I would be. I would be contacting a select group of individuals, putting together very intelligent people, fearless. And I would line up a scenario to sucker those people in and film the shit out of them. I would in a heartbeat. I would love to do that because I love hunting. <laughs> right? Humans are easy. Humans are the easiest animals on the planet to hunt. Don't kid yourselves. Humans are easy to pattern, easy to expose. They don't have a sense of smell. Easy. I would be love. I would love to hunt the hunters, the human hunters, I would love it, and then expose them, who they are, and that would fill in a huge puzzle piece for us, I'm certain, right? Now, sorry about the bell. Hope was useful. Okay, who is next on here? Puzzle, oops, uh oh, what did I do there? All right, mark this as red. Puzzle patterns pieces possibly. Dear Steve, it occurred to me the other day that a pattern has emerged. If you will note, when people smell, the rancid smell in, there's nothing there. A couple of, couple of this with the fact that though they cannot see it, they still feel a presence. This, this makes me wonder is if when they do whatever it is, they do to disappear or appear whether it's passing through a portal or whether it's making their hair become translucent or blending in like a predator monster or a chameleon, perhaps that is what creates the odor. I do not know. I just know that some people see them and they say that they disappear and there's a smell or there's a smell and then they see them or there's a smell and they're not there. But there's a presence or they can hear something walking. Just food for thought. I've been listening to you for some years now and that pattern seems to be prevalent. Rick. Okay, Rick. Agreed. And I uh, actually talked about that earlier. And I actually, I think I mentioned that to Dave Plyas a while back. And I said, I got a funny feeling that possibly when they pass to our plane, maybe that scent is the residue. And he said he agreed. Mm. So who knows? Not that he's an expert or anybody else is, but he's definitely got more time looking into this topic than I do. But I've been thinking the same thing myself. Keep the wheels turning, man. Keep the wheels turning. Keep them turning. All right, this next one's a ton of my story. Hi, Steve. My name is C. Ryan DeBoer. <clears throat> you can use it. You'll have to forgive my grammar, as I, as I did not have much education. Oh, I'm sure you got lots. I'm right there with you. In the mid-90s, I went hunting with my boss, Chad, and the guy, and the guy named Richard. We went to a place south on Prince of Wales Island called McLean Arm. That'll be in Alaska. Richard was dropped off first in this inlet. I was dropped off next, and Chad said he was going around the corner, and that was where the boat would be. The terrain is broken mus mus muskades. I'm thinking you certain you mean muskeg. <clears throat> we were deer hunting for Sitka Black's Hill, and about an hour into the hunt, I had a feeling of being watched from behind. I was hunting with a 7mm Magnum, and if I remember, it had a 5x20 scope on it. When I turned around, I saw a huge, hairy, man-like creature. It was about 30 feet away and huge. I remember its skin was gray. His face looked like a human. His nose was big and flat. His mouth was big as well and almost looked like it was smiling. I flipped my scope covers Looked at it through my scope, and it just disappeared. I wasn't going to shoot unless it came at me. I then hightailed it back to the boat, 
and had a feeling I was being watched, and I never told my boss about it. When I got back to catch a can and went to work, Steve, a co-worker, asked where we went hunting. I told him where, and he said, So do you want... So do you want to... Kushtika. I think he meant, so you went to Kushtika country, and that the Haida natives reserved that area for them. Steve, telling me that reassured me that what I saw, what I saw. I love your program, watch it every day, see Ryan DeBoer. P.S. I still like to hike, haven't been much of a hunter, but I love the woods. Okay, let me get back to that core. So they went here. The natives reserved that area for them. Okay, so you meant that the Haida natives reserved that area for the Kushtika. Kushtika is probably a name for the Sabe people, beings, right? So, interesting. And again, didn't tell the people you were with. Common pattern. And uh, the disappearing thing, another strong pattern. But what my question would be is, uh, did that being, like, did it absolutely disappear right in front of your eyes? Did you see it? break apart and disappear into thin air or when you look down scope covers or whatever you're gonna whatever you did scope covers put the gun up was there a time that you blinked and looked away and then looked back and it was gone that's a that's a curious part for me for a long time now i have thought because so many people said they looked away for one second went back and gone now what i'm wondering is if our eyes remember the power of our eyes there's more to our eyes than we are taught, 100% guarantee. But I've always wondered if, once you get your eyes on one of these beings, if you do not break your stare, I'm not saying look it in the eyes, but I'm just saying, boom, you see one, don't blink. Don't blink, tell your friend, reach for your camera, do whatever you're doing, and don't look away. Then all of a sudden you're gonna hear a growl behind you, or a, or a smacking on a tree sound, a wood knock sound, and if you've got balls of titanium, you're going to ignore that sound. Don't break the gaze from that being. Don't break your gaze. Don't blink. Because, and I'm wondering, what I'm getting at is I'm wondering if our eye power, once you got them, you got them. Nothing to do about it. Until you blink and break that line of connection from our eyes to their presence. Maybe. So, that is why my question to you is, did that being absolutely become translucent whatever just go disappear while your eyes were looking at it or when you blinked and looked away and then looked back was it gone that's my question to you all right that is a it's a big question for me and possibly a bunch of other people out there too right thanks for sending that in you might want to uh, tell your boss, your co-workers next time, because they just might have a little hidden secret too, especially if they're hunters in Alaska, and they do hunts like that. All right, <clears throat> Steve. Hey, Steve, Mark from Texas here. There's a video on YouTube. The title is The Story of Paycheck Sasquatch and UFO Connection. How it all began. This guy has 35 years of experience with Sasquatch and ETs. I learned a lot from him. It's an hour and 39 long, but well worth your time. Thank you for all you don't stop. All right, there you go. <laughs> Will I have time to do that? I don't know. But consider it shared. And uh, maybe I will. I don't have time. I don't watch stuff on YouTube, sadly. Not very often. Oh, okay, here's a follow-up on... Mark, this is red. You'll understand if you watched yesterday's the day before his video. Hi, Steve. In regards to the three photos of the little hand, it was taken in a public swimming pool in North Queensland at night, but it's not as dark in there as it looks. No one else in that pool at the time of the photo taken, completely accidentally while playing. It was taken a few years ago. People can take from it what they will or leave it. I don't make up bullshit stories, and I personally hate people that bullshit. I know it's only another photo, and they don't mean anything to you, but this one is totally original. I still have the original photo. It was examined by some photographers, and it blew them away. Absolutely. No dead body in there. Look at the colors going up the arm. It's like the same color as the pool, or is it transparent? Stuff, if I know. Stuff, 
if I know, but it's a bloody real, but it's a bloody real photo and no bloody photo shop on this one. If half these people had half the paranormal experience I've had, they'd understand the truth. Okay, man, appreciate it. Appreciate the follow up. That answered my question. Was it in a river? Was it in a creek? That's definitely an odd one. But like you say, it's just something that what can we, what can I do that? What can we do with that knowledge? It's like, okay, there's something absolutely crazy going on. It's a photograph. And there I am, stopped. Stopped at a dead wall. Unless it keeps happening and happening and happening and happening and all of a sudden somebody really figures it out. That's an odd one. It's crazy. I don't think I'd, I would, I would be too jacked up to have that showing up in my photos myself. All right, this one is titled, hold on a second. Okay, Mark, this is red. This title, The Truth, Slash, Officer John Graham. Hello, Steve, Officer Graham here again. <clears throat> Excuse me, you guys. I'm a current law officer in Washington State. I've been serving for over 38 years and still going. I've been a city cop, sheriff's deputy, and a woods cop. And this is for the skeptics that slander and bash this round table. Any law enforcement officer knows when you conduct an investigation, you take statements. Excuse me. You listen to witnesses and collect factual information. So let's look at Bigfoot settings as a large crime scene. Lucky for us, the crime scene has thousands of witnesses. So we're going to submit thousands of statements from all around the world. All of our witnesses do not know each other. Heck, some of our witnesses don't even speak the same language. And here is the real truth of this investigation. How come all the statements match and are of the same narrative? Large rocks were thrown in the lake or river. I smelled an awful odor. I heard a tree fall. It followed me step for step as I walked back to my vehicle. I was filled with great fear and felt like I was being told to leave the area. Now, if you have half a brain and any common sense, a normal person would realize, how could all these people tell the same lie? I think not. Do you see the gravity? No, but your feet are planted on the ground. All I'm trying to say, just because you haven't seen a Sasquatch doesn't mean they don't exist. I have several friends of sound mind who have seen the hairy man and swear Bigfoot is real. Now let's switch gears. We're heading for a great big fall and it's coming faster than you think. What you got to tell you about the craziness of the world right now. If I were you, I'd start storing up some water, canned food, guns, bullets, fuel, and find a few trustworthy neighbors. You're going to need them. Or they're going to need you. I'm not some prepper who believes the sky is falling, but wake up, people. Hey, if nothing happens, you can donate some food to the local charity. Steve, thanks for stepping up and letting people tell the stories. This is a fantastic thing you're doing. Keep the faith, brother, and keep fighting. Canada is going down and America is right behind her. Only God and people of truth are going to clean up this mess. Well, thanks for letting me vent on all of you. God bless America and Canada and keep all of you safe, Officer Graham. God bless you too, Officer Graham. Appreciate the email, encouragement, and support for all the people. Yeah, I haven't really talked too much about what's going on on the planet lately. I've just been kind of watching it myself and keeping my lip bit as the shit show goes down and realized, I think what I probably realized because I'm a little off topic from what we normally talk about, what I've realized this past couple months watching the various channels who I somewhat promoted a couple months back um, was uh, it doesn't take me much to, to pick up a, a, a message myself. I pick up a message and I want to plow forward. Okay, got it, go. Right? I can't, I have a very tough time just staying and focusing on one little item because it, it's a small circle to go in. I see the item, note taken, move forward, grab. Oh, there's a mink. There's a, oh, he's gonna. Oh, damn, he went behind my uh, turkey barn. He comes out, I'll switch the camera. I haven't seen a mink here. Definitely wasn't a uh, Martin, that was a mink. Black one, right there. All right, sorry guys. Is it funny how many times something comes up in front of me, but usually I videotape it, sure. Come on out, you little bugger. 
Let me get ready. Oh, look at that. I got this right here. All right, give me a second. What? No way. Did you guys see that? <laughs> Came right up to below the window. Crazy. Got him. <laughs> hmm. Probably going to go find a chicken and kill it. Okay. <laughs> What's it talking about there? A little weird little interruption. Um, getting tidbits of information moving forward. Okay, so getting back to the people that I have been listening to. Uh, call them whistleblowers, call them truth tellers, independent journalists. Um, the pattern, it's not a pattern, but they just keep telling, they keep pointing out all the, all the dark things being done. They keep pointing it out, pointing it out. Look what they've done now, look what they've done now, look what they've done now. I get it, I got it. I have seen enough evidence to absolutely convince me of the corruption going on in the collective Western governments. It just is. It's just in our face. And I've got it. And then I come to the frustrating part of, well, nobody's coming up with the answer. Nobody's coming up with the answer or action to solve the problems. That's it. And I'm guilty too. I'm absolutely guilty too. I've been trying to ponder it when i got time to come up with some kind of answer of action to fix it instead of just pointing it out. I'm tired of the people pointing it out. So, uh, but getting back to you, officer, the way you're sharing with us, yeah, I agree that we are falling at a rapid pace without a doubt. The people who are in the position of being able to control the military, uh, predominantly what I've seen so far, the two worst culprits in the globe right now are the current American government and British government. They do not want to see, entertain, or speak of any peace talks in any way. And they have been putting forth a great effort to keep war going, killing people. It's unfair, it's upsetting, it's frustrating. And 100% uh, of the people that create, support, fund, encourage war, 100% of those people never, ever, ever are harmed and never lose a dime. Yet they control the deaths they support and um, cause the deaths of millions of people globally. So, why do we allow this, right? Okay, I'm getting off track, but yeah. Sorry. Um, agreed. A lot of shit's coming. Uh, the majority of people don't see it. The majority of people aren't going to be able to, in a position to do anything about it anyway. And it's frustrating, but agreed. I guess what I'm saying is, officers, I agree. I follow, I watch, I, see, I know what's going down, I see what's coming down the pipe. I'm ready to deal with it myself, but I wish, uh, I just wish the people would rise up, grab these individuals and put them in a room and be done with them and then focus on the good, right? All right. That's enough of that. I know the majority of you don't want to hear it. I don't know why. Is what it is. So let's get some more voices heard on figuring out some mysteries when it comes to the free beings and us. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is titled, This is about my son, Mac, from New Brunswick, and my encounters. I don't want you to get you in, in trouble with YouTube again, but I want to write you concerning my boy, Mac, from Boys Town, New Brunswick. My encounters are included in this email further down. Hi, Steve, my name's Heather. My son Mac wrote you back in December while he was on the long haul job from Halifax to British Columbia. I knew you were bombarded with emails, but I had to let you know what happened to him while in that job. His absentee father decided that Mac or I or his stepfather had no idea what may be best for him in the way of employment, and the guys who Mac was working for were, we'll just say, gangsters. It was told to him that he would be back in two weeks for Christmas. That that date kept changing. And then Matt called me and told me he didn't have any idea when he would see him again. When we would see him again. Mac is a high-functioning, autistic, Asperger's young man with extreme giftings in sports, including shooting, lead guitarist in our church band, just built an electric guitar in two hours, and just an all-around sweet, loving young man. The night he was able to get away from the guys, a Christian man rescued him and we got him back. He must have saw something they were hauling the other. He must have saw something they were hauling other than the luxury cars. There's an altercation, and they put their hands on my boy. 
They had a body bag waiting for him. He was going to be in pieces. All the while, I was in complete panic and stress, not sleeping for weeks. And I'm a power of God believing prayer warrior who almost couldn't believe. It was the scariest time ever as a mom, other than, other, other than two months before on October 25th, having a tractor trailer driving through my daughter's apartment building, stopping just behind the wall where she was sitting. Almost lost both my kids in months of each other. He's back and has PTSD with lots of love and prayer. He's ready to talk. I'm going to give his testimony soon at church and back playing and shredding on his guitars. Just want to let you know what happened that transpired after you read his email. Wow. It meant a lot to him that he felt safe to share his encounters with you. I sent you my story of possible encounters back in March 21. You are what he sees as a well-rounded man, well -rounded man who is how a man should be. A great role model. God bless you and Sarah. All right. Appreciate the kind words. I'm sorry he went through that. And nothing good comes from associating with gangsters. <laughs> nothing. It's a guaranteed road to an early death, right? I'm glad he's back. You're lucky. I had an experience when I was younger. Around 15 years of age or so. I was in bed sleeping and, and around... 2 a.m. I was woken up by this scream slash roar on the road next to my home and I was terrified. I'm familiar with animals in the area. I'd never heard a sound like that before. My mom and I lived in Fredericksburg, New Brunswick. A quiet, peaceful place with woods surrounding our home. I know somebody lives there. I put it out of my mind. And one day, many years later, my son was watching something to do with Bigfoot online and I heard that sound again. I was in shock. It sent a chill down my spine, just like the first time I heard it. I know these creatures exist. Nothing can convince me otherwise. I've had other experiences over the years that I could possibly attribute to these creatures being around, and also experienced that feeling, telling me I need to leave an area I was walking in. I was smart enough to listen to that and chose not to walk in that area behind my home again. I know these experiences, such as hearing the whistle, the huffing, grunting sounds that was walking beside my house on a trail that led to the river, house slapping, and something that made my neighbor's horse go simply crazy and causing my dog to react in a complete, full-on, defensive, defensive mode that she never heard before. Didn't include sightings, and might not mean much to anyone else, but they happened to me and made me more aware of the things we aren't being told. Thank you for your channel. You're doing a, you're doing a wonderful job helping people cope with their experiences with these creatures allowing them to release the fear and anxiety they may have been carrying for many years. God bless your caring. Heather from Central New Brunswick. Could you send your mailing address so we can send you a couple of things from our area? The Miramichi. Miramichi. I promise they won't blow up because there will be something for Sarah too. All right. Well, hopefully I remember to get back to you on that. And uh, appreciate your email. Kind words of support for everybody here. And I'm glad your son's back with you. Um, can't say I haven't had my brushes with that side of the line in my past. It's not a good place to be. Now, what do you think? One more? One more. What do we got? This one's really wrong. Uh, wrong, really long, sorry. So it's really long. Imagine somebody have, emailing me and I said, oh, this is really wrong. Not good. Okay, Mark, this is red. Insights slash puzzle pieces question mark. Steve, just wanted to write in to share some of my thoughts on the subject. First of all, I've almost always believed in Sabe since seeing the Patterson Gimlin film when I was young. I wouldn't say that I've been actively seeking knowledge on the subject, as in the past, I've seen those so-called experts on TV who have always disappointed. Deny, 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 right? However, two years ago, for some reason, I stumbled upon your channel and became very interested in and started listening. A couple months later, I noticed my brother was wearing a Bigfoot t-shirt, and we got to talking about the subject. He said that he's been watching this channel called TheFactsByHowToHunt.com. And I was amazed because I've been watching the same thing. Here's where I get into what I think is possible puzzle piece. I'm a twin. I don't know if many of you listeners have checked into this topic, but there is a thing called twins speak. 
This is where twins, possibly triplets or quads, would intuitively know what the other is thinking or saying or doing. I've experienced this my whole life, especially in my younger days, not so much in my adult life. I know this will not come across through an email. It's funny, I heard something in the wall right here. And I know I haven't completed that wall of the barn wall, but that little sucker's in here looking for mice. I know this will not come across through an email, sorry, but the fact that my brother and I were both seeking knowledge on this subject without the other knowing reminded me of our connection that we have without speaking or any other form of communication, something that I will have been pondering on when we talk about how intuitive these beings seem to be with humans. I think that we have this ability as human beings, but for some reason we don't tap into that. Always been intentionally tapped away from us, without a doubt. However, multiple birth children, twins, trips, quads, etc. have this ability when they're young. Some to greater extent than others, but I feel like all I feel like all have this ability. Just my thought. How crazy is that? That little sucker squeezed into a tiny hole on the outside of the shop and he's hunting mice or rats. Isn't that great? I'm not scaring him away. How handy is that? Perfect. I can't believe I got that on camera. Nobody would have believed me, right? Alright, back at it. We won't disturb him while he's on his hunt, keeping my shop free of those chewing little bastards. He's right under my feet. That is freaking awesome. I think that we have this ability as human beings, but for some reason we don't tap into that. However, multiple birth children, you yeah, have read all that. Just my thought, possibly something maybe others could seek knowledge on that with maybe piece together their puzzle. A second puzzle, possible puzzle piece that I have been contemplating comes from my research through YouTube videos with near-death experiences. Much like this topic, there are hundreds of cases documented on YouTube, not to the extent of this topic, but still fairly extensive, of people having near-death experiences. They differ in what they encounter after leaving their body, but every one of them states that they can still see their bodies as they leave them. I feel like our eyes are only for the material things around us. Our sight is entirely something different. It comes from within our true being. You've been recently talking about that when people see other people, we immediately look into their eyes and question, why is it? For me, it is the opposite. I very rarely look at someone in their eyes. I think subconsciously I know that it is possible for us to know someone just by looking in their eyes. We don't realize it or practice it, but it's a trait deep within us. I've always been shy and afraid to communicate with people, but I think it's much deeper than that. I don't want to look people in the eyes because I'm afraid they will know my deepest secrets and insecurities. Anyway, I know this isn't much, but possibly others can relate and have more and better insight into these topics. Steve, I appreciate all you've done for this community and the fact that you don't squelch any voice. You let every voice be heard. May someone, maybe someone much smarter than myself can have some input onto one or both of these subjects and enlighten others much better than I can. Maybe they can. We'll see. Keep digging. All right? You got everybody's wheels turning. That's the key here, too, is people sharing here encourage people's wheels to spin and grind. Meaning your mind. Right? It's the key. I've noticed the I noticed with the education system, the majority what I went through anyways, the majority of it was just 
Memorize this and repeat after me, and then you will pass. If you don't, you fail. But memorize what I say to you, and then I'm going to test you on your memory, and you better score the test complete. All right? That seems to be the message. Repeat what I tell you, or you will fail. <laughs> oh, fuck. Up your ass to that. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah, we're not taught to seek the truth, are we? from a young age. Seek the truth at all costs. Fight back to controlling tyrants at all costs is not our lesson number one when we first enter the, enter the school education system, is it? Anyways, I'm babbling all over the map. Um, I got a lot to do. I have a lot more to share. I have a lot more things I need to learn and look into so I can share with you. I have a lot of people out there who have a lot of information that I'm helping and I'm encouraging and I'm doing whatever I can to help them same time so that they can deliver it to all of you the people and uh, that's about it for today i think it was amazing i caught that mink i'm still kind of chuckling about that <laughs> i caught a mink because it's funny you know i when i go out into the woods i always catch something and i share i always share it with all you guys but something always happens right something fine happened right here and they came into the shop i gotta get the hole plug but so I was trapping rats in here because it used to be, uh, they had an old shitty turkey tent over there with a chain link fence and a tent tarp on it. It's just gross. We moved in. I wiped it all out and I built that one. And when I wiped it all out, there seemed to be a flood of rats made their way in here and were chewing on my shit. And I probably killed maybe a dozen or so. And, uh, kind of brings me a little peace of mind that that little guy is running around in my shop cleaning up for me. Perfect. He's welcome in here anytime. <laughs> anyway, I'll be back shortly, you guys. Keep emailing in your, your knowledge, all right? Don't be scared to share and speak of the truth. Everybody's got your back here. It's a safe place. Share my story at howdohunt.com. Uh, there's another yet another scammer using my, my uh, channel name and my image scamming you guys. <laughs> I've never had WhatsApp or anything in my life. I've never offered up prizes and items for you to buy. You know, it's just it's a scam. It's a scam, scam, scam. Don't reply to it. I blocked it again, but for some weird, strange reason, the scams seem to be able to coexist with Google and YouTube. Don't know why. Uh, one more thing for Sarah. Spring 20, uppercase is the code for her spring sale in her store, the howtohauntstore.com. And she's got a lot of stuff she's working on, I guess, for that. And that is it. I'm complete for today, and here I go for the rest of my day. Babble fest today, man. Be safe out there.